Hello, welcome to Vibe Code Dev. The world is changing at lightning speed, and big tech is in the driver's seat. But where are they taking us? They promise innovation, convenience. But what if their real plan is something far more controlling? I could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20 percent. How soon might that happen? I would say that now they're as good as a smart college student and, and, and sort of reaching past that. I really worry, particularly at the entry level, that the AI models are, 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 are you know, ve very much at the center of what, what an entry level human worker would do. I think what is striking to me about the, the, this, this AI boom is that it's bigger and it's broader and it's moving faster than anything has before. And so today we're exposing what I believe is big tech's end game, total dominance. First, let's peek behind the curtain. Let's watch a segment from the CEO's diary. What's going to happen when Sam Altman's product gets good enough that he can lay off most of his staff? Just curious what happens. I think it's 100 people or less in his company. He doesn't have like a big team. I think part of that is because when I heard his TED talk a couple of days ago, he said, yeah, I think AGI is sooner than we think, actually. You want teams to be small. You want like to do a lot of things relative to the number of people you have. I'll try to have you know, relatively small numbers of people with huge amounts of responsibility. Um, you know, one of the scariest conversations I was privy to was when a friend of mine who's a billionaire in London, he knows the CEO of one of the biggest air companies in the world, I can't name, and he said, by the way, what he tells me in private is not what he's saying publicly. Yeah. I, he, he said to me, yeah. what this particular CEO thinks is going to happen with AI is pretty horrific. Mm -hmm. And the CEO of this big AI company is totally cool with it. It's, it's, it's horrific what he thinks is about to happen. And then when I watch this guy do his like, online talks and give his opinion, he's so nuanced and everything will be fine and he's an AI optimist. Then I heard this scenario at this kitchen table in East London from his friend about what he really thinks and it was chilling. Yeah. Like, actually, the lack of empathy. Yeah. That makes sense to me. But, like, the obsession with power was shocking to me. Chilling right? What they say publicly is one thing, but their private conversations or those unguarded moments in interviews. That's where the truth slips out. Take open AI CEO, Sam Altman. He's been surprisingly open about their core subscription model. Let's hear it from him. I think the way to model us is we want to build, we want to be people's like core AI subscription and way to use that thing. Some of that will be like what you do inside of ChatGPT. Um, we'll have a couple of other kind of like really key parts of that subscription, but mostly we will hopefully build this smarter and smarter model. We'll have these surfaces like future devices, future things that are sort of similar to operating systems, whatever. And it doesn't stop there. As OpenAI's COO reportedly discussed with the Wall Street Journal that $200 subscription. It's just a made-up number for now. Strategy seems clear. Get us hooked, deeply integrated, and then the price can go anywhere they want. Um, and everyone asked, by the way, like, how did you guys even come up with $20 as the price point? Like, the answer is, like, Sam and I were like, I don't know, pick a number, 20 sounds good. Okay, let's do it. Um, and that was kind of how we came up with 200 as well. Um, and the reason, <laughs> okay. by the way, that we did that, again, very much in the spirit of being experimental, um, was we saw, if you, look at the, if you look at the distribution of use of ChatGPT users, it is, it is highly, um, uh, there's an extreme power law at work. So if you look at the far right side of that graph, there's a, there's a, a handful of people that use ChatGPT at levels that ex far ex exceed what the kind of median or average is in the rest of the, the, rest of the user base. And so there are these like insane power users that like just hammer the thing all day. And so we were like, well, I don't know, like what is the product for them? And we have real costs when we, when we, when we serve these models. And so we're like, I don't know, they're like if we want to serve them, like we probably have to charge something like $200 a month. And we kind of like all stared at each other around the room and we're like, should we just launch $200 a month? And we did, and now it's growing very quickly. Any other prices that we can expect? 2000. <laughs> Then there's Microsoft. Just one week after laying off 6,000 employees, their CEO was enthusiastically describing their vision for an everything app. Listen to this. Uh, it's a very AI forward experience and people are so natural. They type in so much, they engage, but it's grounded in search. It can use all the tools. It will have personal context. And over time we can be proactive there too, right? And be it because you're wearing your glasses, you know, you're a student, telling you, hey, you got to, you know, get to your homework. I saved some time on your calendar to do so. And when you go to sit to do it, it has prepackaged stuff for you. All of that, I think, is definitely within the line of sight. You know, the details will have to be worked out as we make progress. But this is what we are working on. Coincidence or a calculated move? 
My take. This is the path to the death of individual apps. Big tech isn't just building better tools. Think about it. Every app you're developing now using their AI APIs, potentially useless in one to two years. They're aiming for an AGI-powered everything app. One app to rule every single aspect of our digital lives. They want to build the app that does it all. This isn't just about convenience. It's about control. The result? We could be left jobless, addicted to their single platform, and paying for it. Forever. Oh, and don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. What are your thoughts on this? Am I onto something? Or is this just fear-mongering? Drop your opinions in the comments below. In my next video, I'll break down concrete steps we can take to combat this, to reclaim our digital future. So, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. Let's build a community that's aware and ready to act.